good afternoon and good evening to you all wherever you are joining us from and worshiping God with us today Thursday the fourth week of Easter mass is going to be offered for your intentions and for the needs of your lives and your families we continue to pray for each other as we face this very difficult moment and we pray for those who have asked our prayers pray for those who are in need at this time especially those whose condition is dire i like to pray for people who are attempting to harm themselves or to harm others out of the abundance of frustration and and, and pain that is almost intolerable and unendurable we pray that God may help them find some grace and some, some support at this time. We pray for the homeless. We pray for the very um, poor. We pray for seniors in our society. Pray for people who lack the support system at such a critical moment. That God may inspire their neighbors and friends to come to their help. We pray for our sick pray for our doctors and nurses pray for medical workers all around the world that god may continue to protect them as they daily risk their lives for the care and service of god's people we pray for leaders pray for people who are given to make decisions that are so important and have such greater ramifications for the health and healing of our world may the holy spirit lead and guide their intellect their decision-making process, but above all, their value system. And I'd like you to bring your intentions to God at this time. I pray for those who have died at this time too. I pray especially for Joyce hernandez Khan, who was buried yesterday. That God may rest her and that God may be with her family as they go through the healing. Our opening hymn today will be, I Surrender All. I Surrender All. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust in Him, His presence daily live. I surrender. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered today to worship our good God, gathered from wherever we are, and we pray together and we pray for each other. I pray that the grace of God from this altar may come to your home and come to your life and bless every rough edge in your life, and that God may make himself present to you powerfully today. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for the intentions that you have brought and the intentions we have mentioned here, let us first acknowledge our unworthiness and ask God's mercy and forgiveness for our many sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity 
than at its beginning. Look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonders of rebirth. May you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Pamphus, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Pergia in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued from Persia and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent words to them. But my brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up motioned with his hand and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With an uplifted arm, he led them out. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel, the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as, his, as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out every wise wish. From this man's descendant, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing the course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the sound is Alleluia. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Hallelujah. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Hallelujah. My faithfulness and mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, my Rock, my Savior. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had washed the feet, the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than one whom he has sent, than one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen. But so that the scriptures might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today I will reflect with you from the Gospel reading. Jesus had just washed. Now this incident happened on the Last Supper, just while supper was on. He stopped and decided to first wash his disciples' feet. And when he had done that, he said to them, No slave is greater than his master. And if you understand what I have just done to you, or for you, if you understand, and I like to focus on the verse that he is using here. If you understand, blessed are you if you do it. Understanding and doing. Those are very important verse that the Lord is using here to capture the model or the example he was just laying for his disciples. Peter understood that. You remember in First Peter, Peter said, the Lord Jesus suffered, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. So he modeled something for us that we must follow in his steps. And what he modeled was service. In another text, he will say, I came not to be served, but to serve and to give, his, to give my life as a ransom for many. So what the Lord did here for the twelve, including Judas at this time, was teaching us that fundamentally, as Christians, our calling is a call to service. And Pope John Paul II was so very apt, you know, when he spoke about the Christian calling as service. Your calling is service. It's to serve. It's not just about everything. Everything else is a preparation for service. Even as evangelists, our understanding, our reading, everything that we do is to prepare us to serve. And Jesus said, Blessed are you if you understand that your calling, that my calling, it's about service. If you understand that, it says, blessed are you if you do it. Blessed am I if I do it. If I understand that my calling is service. Now, if you have ever served people, and I'm sure you have, because every one of us has served in some capacity, whether as a teacher, you have been serving your students, you know, and serving your government, and serving your community, and serving those parents. If you have been a nurse or a doctor, you are there serving your patients, but also serving their families, and then fundamentally serving the world, because what you do has impact and has effects 
around the world. If you have an, if you are a police officer, um, a soldier, a sailor, whatever it is that you are, you have served in some capacity. If you are a parent, you have been serving your your spouses or your children, you know, or, or even serving your neighbors. So, in, in a sense, service is something that we do always. So it, it's not about just the fact that, yes, I, I, I'm just doing service. What the Lord said, the reason he modeled this for us was that our service will be meaningful. That we will know why we do what we do. You may get a paycheck from what you do, but the Lord was not talking about that kind of service. Well, I do this because I get a paycheck. Now, he's talking about how what you do could become your vocation. That means a calling, not a job. That's when service, whether or not you're working in a restaurant. I'm sure the times you've gone to a restaurant, you've met someone who went over and above the call of duty, who was able to transform their service in a restaurant to a calling where they made everyone, every customer feel different just coming to that place. And each time you came there, they were the ones you wanted to meet or to be served by because of how they made you feel. That's exactly what the Lord was talking about when he spoke of service. Now, service is difficult. The reason why service is difficult is you are called to serve people who do not employ you in the first instance, in most cases. And most of those you serve have expectations that they were not, were not communicated to you. And they are going to judge you by those expectations that you know nothing about. And in most cases, you are likely going to be considered a failure or not good enough. That's what you get. All right. In, in service, you don't go serving expecting a thank you, expecting affirmation, expecting that people will appreciate the amount of effort you bring into that service. They don't see that. They judge you by the little things that they see and can feel. And can touch and in most cases they don't see all everything else that goes behind that and so there are times where you're going to be judged just by one thing meanwhile to even get to that point you have done 20,000 things already but you're just going to be judged by one little thing and in most cases it could be a mistake that there was too much salt if you were if in a, in a restaurant or that you you raised your voice too high or that you were late for a one minute. Or that you just were not there at all. But most of them never care whether you were sick or something was going on. That is not, they just want the services that you promised to provide, that you were called to provide. That's why service is a difficult job. It's a difficult calling. It requires a lot of patience and tolerance. It requires that the one serving knows why. They are serving. Knows who they are serving. It's important. As a priest, I know I am of service to God's people. But I know they are not my boss. If they were my boss, I'll be so frustrated most times. But I understand who it is that employed me. It's Jesus who is Christ. And at all times, I will make sure I focus on the one who employed me. Yes. Am I always going to be good enough for the one who employed me? Yes. Will I be good enough for all those I serve? No, not always. <laughs> Most of the times you will not. And so if you focus on the people you serve and forget the one who called you to serve, most times you're going to be really, really frustrated and pissed. Trust me, you will. And we see it in the first reading. Even God had to struggle to tolerate the children of Israel. This is what the Bible said. It said in the first reading that he with, with uplifted arm, with uplifted arm, he led them out. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert 
And I'd like you to focus on the verb, putting up with, put up. He put up with them. Now, to put up with someone mean, requires a lot of toler tolerance. It requires a lot of canceling their offenses and just, you know, taking in whatever they're throwing at you. The children of Israel have said God in any number of ways. By their unbelief, by their complaining, by their arrogance, by everything. And God had to put up with all of that. Now that's what service requires. That you put up with everything that is thrown at you. You put up with disrespect. You put up, just mention anything. Alright, that's what it requires to put up with. You know how Moses got so fed up putting up with these people until he himself did not get to the promised land. Sometimes in service, that could be the consequence that you never get to where others ultimately get to because you lost it, because I lost it. And, and so in whatever capacity you are serving, I want you to focus, to remember, why am I doing this? You're not doing it for the people who are complaining against you or calling you names or doing... They are not the one. Yes, they are enjoying the services, but they are not the reason why you're doing what you're doing. There's one who is the reason why you are doing what you are doing, why I'm doing what I'm doing. He is the Lord. He is Christ Jesus. He is the one who called you. And he said, blessed are you if you understand that you are called by him not by anyone else who is enjoying and benefiting from your service. And he said, if you can, if you understand this and you go ahead and do it that way, he says, you're blessed. And, and so my dear friends, I, I don't know in what capacity you are serving at this time of great crisis, but whether you're doing the most or doing the least, you're doing something that is important. Whether you're serving your family or serving grandparents, just realize that you are called you are called by the almighty God and you are called to serve and service is your path your way, your road to holiness and I hope that you can understand who called you and why you are where you are doing what you are doing focus on the Lord and focus on his calling and I am telling you everything else you do would suddenly have a different meaning and a different feel for you, then you are able to put up with whatever is thrown at you, especially at a time like this. May God who has called us into this ministry of service help us to recognize the value of our service and the source of that calling that we draw strength every day from Him, not from the opinions of people, not from their gratitude or ingratitude, not from their complaints or their praises, but that we draw strength constantly from the Lord of our lives, the Lord of our nation. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we just want to thank you for the gift of our calling. You have called us in so many ways. The Apostle Paul tells us some have been called uh, to evangelism. Some have been called to prophetism. Some have been called. We have all been called in so many ways. Hospitality movement, health care, security, whatever it is that you have called us into, oh God. Parents, teachers, nurses, help us, dear God, to recognize that you are the origin of our vocations and help us to do whatever we do for the glory and honor of your holy name. Help us, O oh God, to stay focused on what pleases you and what matters to you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Almighty God, for people who are struggling in whatever vocations they are in right now. As we speak and pray, there is someone who is deeply frustrated and maybe angry or even depressed in what they do because they cannot find joy and contentment or consolation or comfort of the spirit in their vocational mission right now. Maybe they are even planning to walk away. We ask, oh God, that your Holy Spirit may let the scales fall from their skies, their eyes, that they may realize the very meaning 
of their ministry and of their calling. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those struggling with exhaustion and burnout, especially for caregivers whose work is more difficult at this time. Pray for people in our healthcare system who have to work several hours without break. That you, O oh God, may protect them, especially at moments of exhaustion where their defenses are down. That you may keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people who receive service. That they may grow in grace and graciousness towards the people who serve them. That they may learn to be grateful and appreciative in their own way and make it easy for those who serve them, whether as parents or as teachers, in any way, that we may all make it easy for those who serve us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick, for especially for those in critical care. Pray for people who are very, who are homeless at this time, those in jail, people on the fringes of society. Pray for people who are not even sure what to eat, what, how they will feed themselves or take care of their families today or tomorrow. Dear God, we ask that you may inspire their neighbors and loved ones around to come to their help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I bring your own intentions and concerns that you have expressed today and all the prayers that you carry in your hearts every day. We bring them to God and ask that from this altar, his angels may bring them up to the altar in heaven. And from heaven, the blessings of God may be released in full measure to meet your needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we say the hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Our lives are our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished women of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, she wants to us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be confirmed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more. The lamb once slain who lives forever. The joy of the resurrection therefore overcome with Pascal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. 
God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a deep wall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy Brogley our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your handmaid, Joyce Hernandez Khan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant, O oh Lord, that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of our peace. And from me to you and your families, may the peace of Christ be with you and rest with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Dear God, we raise up the body of your Son and the blood of your Son as your people around the world desire to receive this body and this blood. May you, O oh God, who are able to do the, un, the unimaginable and the impossible, go through every heart that seeks you and every family and every household that is yearning for you and nourish them in every way, O oh God. May those who are sick experience healing. Those who are desperate find hope. Those who are troubled, find peace. Those who have died, no rest. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us in this Eucharist. Pray that God may be with you and that God may watch over and that God may bless you. And if you forget everything I said today, don't forget this. God loves you so, so, so much. He does. And always will. You are his delight. And that is true. I'll invite you to join me in praying the prayer of the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, please defend us in battle. Be our defense against wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God. Trust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits that wander through the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. To the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friend, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, I wanted for us to sing the summons, especially since we are invited to service. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you?
yourself behind if I had called your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you reach the holes twice there? Will your life on cross or scare? Will you let me answer prayers in you and you in